listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for your support of The Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Today we have a very exciting program happening with the Office of International Mission here at the LCMS. And if you've been thinking about missionary service or wondering what it's like, this is a great program for you. So I have three guests joining me today. The Reverend Mark Raby, Director of Missionary Recruitment with the LCMS Office of International Mission. Thanks for joining me today. It's good to be here. And Ariana Gomez, Manager of Missionary Recruitment with the LCMS Office of International Mission. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks. My first coffee hour. That's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and Chelsea Irwin, LCMS missionary serving in the Czech Republic. Thanks for joining today, Chelsea. Thank you. So this is a new, a new-ish program, I understand, Shadow a Missionary, which sounds very, very exciting. Let's give some background to missionary service first, how people serve around the world. So Mark, how do missionaries serve in the LCMS around the world? Well, there's a number of different ways. I mean, there are two particular routes in which someone serves as a missionary. There's a GEO, Globally Engaged in Outreach, which is a two-year missionary opportunity. And then also we have a career missionary who, who commits to five years plus. So those are the two ways in which, in length of time, but there are many ways, whether it be a nurse or a, or a pastor or a deaconess or a teacher. Over half of our missionaries are lay people, so not everyone is a called worker or a ordained pastor. So there are many different ways, business managers. There, there's just a multiplicity of ways in which folks can serve internationally and around the world. Is there a particular common path for people becoming missionaries or does that kind of run the gamut? I don't know that there's so much a common path other than they have an interest in serving internationally and mm -hmm. they've got a, a desire to, to serve outside the United States. Oftentimes people have already served in some capacity with international folks domestically and or, or they've done a short-term trip and with their congregation and, and that kind of whets their appetite. So Chelsea, tell me about your path to becoming a missionary. Yeah, so kind of like Mark was saying, I started out going on a short-term mission trip. So when I was 13 years old, I went on a mission trip to Poland to help at an English camp. And I did that for 10 summers in a row before I applied to become a missionary with the LCMS. I actually, uniquely, I'm serving in the same area where I was serving short-term. So it's a really special, it's a really special story to me. And, and it's definitely full of God moments and clearly God was planning this way before I even thought about becoming a missionary. When I was in college, I was studying to be a preschool teacher and I had no intention of living abroad long term. I just thought, great, I'm going to be a teacher. So in the summertime, when I have no school, I can go on short term mission trips. And very quickly during my senior year, God changed, changed my heart and and I ended up applying and my first placement was only an hour away from where I had been serving short term for the last 10 years. So I have a lot of friends here and I definitely feel like I am, I am called here and it's my home. Tell me more about how you're serving now. I know we've had you on before for a variety of things, but what are you doing now on the mission field? Yeah, this is actually my first time on the coffee hour in my new position. So oh. last time I was a geo missionary and now I'm a career missionary. So I made that transition and I am the coordinator for volunteer opportunities in the Eurasia region. So all volunteers going on short term teams or even the shadow missionary project, I would be coordinating those in Eurasia. What does that look like for you on a daily basis? Do you get to interact with interact with a lot of people? I have quite a few meetings online and it's a lot of administrative stuff, which is a transition to what I was doing during my geo term. I was doing a lot of teaching in the local schools here, which I still get to do that. And I'm really glad that I have that outlet and I get to be involved in the local church body. But most of my work is when the volunteers arrive and then when they're not here, I'm doing administrative things to prepare for their arrival and meeting with church partners on the ground and pastors and people that are going to prepare to receive volunteers at their site of service. So, Ariana, how did you become a missionary? What is your, what is, you have a unique path to missionary do. service, don't you? <laughs> yeah. So, my parents are Gary and Stephanie Schulte. They're current 
LCMS missionaries right now serving in the Republic of Congo. But back in the day, they (laughs) served also in Togo, which is where I was born. And then we lived in the Ivory Coast for a couple of years. And our departure from the Ivory Coast was not planned. A Mm. civil war had broken out, unfortunately, in the country. So we left very suddenly with all the plans in the world to come back to the mission field. Our plans are not God's plans, and that didn't end up happening. My parents went back to Congo It's been about five years now, but we had a long gap in between. But ever since we left the Ivory Coast when I was seven years old, I've always had a heart to go back to the mission field. So for me, that actually looked like pursuing service with Lutheran Bible translators when I was in college. So lots of contact with that organization. And I just kind of kept dipping my toes in the water. They were very persistent with me because I'd have about seven different things I wanted to do (laughs) at a time, but they just kept contacting me and making sure that I was up to date. So I had the opportunity to attend a few of their mission conferences, meet their missionaries. And then I I went on kind of similar to Shadow a Missionary. They call it Crossroads. It was a 10-day trip in Ethiopia, which fun fact is actually the first time I met Pastor Ravy. Uh-huh. <laughs> three years ago. But so Crossroads was a 10-day trip just traveling around Ethiopia, visiting different LBT projects and seeing what our host missionaries' lives looked like. So that was really influential for me. And that led me then to apply for a year-long missionary internship with Lutheran Bible Translators. I served for five months in Cameroon, helping with the publication process for some lectionaries that they had just finished translating. And then I spent a month with a translation team in Sierra Leone and then COVID came and Mm -mm. (laughs) ended things a little bit early. So, but have always had a heart to be involved in missions and really back to be really happy to be back in that world now with this position. Yeah, you're kind of on the flip side of that now, helping to bring other missionaries into the field. And that's a fairly new position for you? Correct. I think this weekend was a month since oh, wow. I started. So, <laughs> and half yeah. of that was Christmas break. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so still new. I won't. Yeah. I won't ask you everything you're doing because I know a month in you're still kind still of getting your feet wet. Yeah. yeah. What kinds of stuff have you been able to do, and and how has your experience on the field kind of been helping you learn learn the ropes of now recruiting missionaries? And definitely, I learned a lot from my own recruitment process with LBT, just Mm. their persistence with me. So that's something that I'm keeping in mind. So far, I'm kind of just getting updates on (laughs) where all of our prospective people are at in Mm -hmm. their process so that I can, we can kind of pass the baton and I can Mm -hmm. start being the one to be contacting them and just encouraging them. I know for me personally, i would said this, but it was a long process and I tried to go a bunch of different ways, Mm -hmm. but LBT kept pulling me back, and so I'm hoping to be that person for for people who are kind of trying to figure out their path. Yeah, I think that's helpful for no for people to know if they're if they've thought about missionary service that it's it's not like you contact international mission and three days later you're deploying on the, mm-hmm. the field. There's there's a process. There's training. There's definitely a lot of steps to actually becoming a missionary and being deployed onto the field. Yeah. And and they, I know I know Office of International Mission folks don't don't let anyone onto the field who isn't prepared to actually <laughs> deploy onto the field. So there there is a lot that happens behind the scenes. Mark, what about you? We've had you on before as well, even yeah. when you were deployed on the field. What, what is it, your path to becoming a missionary? It's kind of a long path. I mean, it did, <laughs> as I think back, I mean, I, I'll give you the condensed version. We'd be here a while. But, you know, I, I was thinking back even as I, in, in my position, going to a couple of beautiful feet, mm. I, I realized after talking to Dr. Glenn Fluge that he was one of those who was instrumental in starting it back on the seminary campus in like ninety. 697, something like that. And I had gone to a couple of the beautiful feet that started on the seminary campus in St. Louis. Mm. And that really kind of whet my appetite towards missions. And, you know, over the course of time, you know, we we had thought about doing mission work. I served my first call. We Even during that first call, we did a couple short-term trips. I even spent some time serving for a couple of years in Kenya. And then ultimately, once international mission had 
known that I was overseas and <laughs> Pastor Dan McMiller got my number. I, the persistence happened and, and OIM recruited me to serve. So, I mean, we've had a, a desire, whether when I served in the parish, to host missionaries, to support them, you know, so it was always there in one capacity or another. And and so it's, it's a process. And just like when it comes to recruiting, it's a process, it's a conversation. And it's not, I mean, our most, one of our most recent candidates, we were able to put them in the go through the process in about six weeks, wow. put them there in orientation and, and onboarding now, but that's not the normal process. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of times it may be a, a long time conversation and kind of like Ari said, it is a matter of, you know, our goal is to hope kind of funnel you in the right place. Sure. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of behind the scenes work. And one yeah. of those things, the new, new-ish program, <laughs> Shadow a Missionary, we're going to talk more about that and the, and the value of uh, shadowing somebody that's already on the field, how that's valuable to somebody considering mission work. After we take a quick break, I'm talking with the Reverend Mark Raby, Ariana Gomez, and Chelsea Irwin about their time on the mission field and the Shadow a Missionary program. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. Joining me today, the Reverend Mark Raby, Ariana Gomez, and Chelsea Irwin from the LCMS Office of International Mission. We're talking about serving on the mission field and the Shadow a Missionary program that is available now for people to take part in. And before, Ariana, when you were telling your story about becoming a missionary, you had talked about being able to kind of see the behind the scenes, see what it's like to be a missionary. So how is how is how how does that relate to the Shadow a, a Missionary program? What is the value? in being able to actually see on the ground what people are doing on the mission field? Yeah, so I had mentioned my crossroads experience with LBT, which was a 10-day trip, jam-packed, a little bit different style than what Shadow and Missionary will be, but ours was jam-packed, and every day we were visiting a new language community Mm. and their translation projects. And not just that, not just seeing the work that was being done, but also our missionary hosts, seeing what they do in the evenings. What do they eat for meals? Mm. How do they travel? What, you know, when they need to go to the market, what does that look like? So it was the work, but it was also, you're there for 10 days, you're living life with them to really just give you an idea of what does this look like all around? Because being a missionary is not just a job, it's your entire lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, and one thing that LBT really emphasized with this trip is this is a trip for discernment. And that's Mm -hmm. really what we're going for with Shadow and Missionary. Someone who really is pretty seriously considering mission service, but maybe you just want to dip your toes in the water first. And so just it's, and Shadow and Missionary is a little slower paced than Crossroads was. We're not going to put you through 10 days of different (laughs) projects, but the idea you're just, you'll be with that missionary for a week or two weeks or however long works for you and them and just following them in their day-to-day, what they do for work, what they do for meals, when they gather with people, officially or unofficially, just what does their life look like in that one to two week period to really just give you an idea of how you could maybe see yourself doing that in, in a foreign context like that. So yeah, definitely with the idea of discernment of, I feel this kind of call maybe, and Mm -hmm. I want to discern further if this is really what God is calling me to do. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And Chelsea, you had mentioned that that you you will actually be the point person for this in in your region or or at least working with the program in your region. And you had experience having a shadow missionary a little while ago. Is that right? Yes. This past September, I hosted a shadow in my home. 
She was a student from Concordia, Chicago, Lydia, and now she, well, she might be finished, but she was studying abroad in the UK this past semester. So on her way to her studies, she stopped in my house for about a week and she got to see what, basically just what I do. And one of my least favorite questions for someone to ask me is what do you do on a day-to-day basis? Because there's absolutely no way to answer that question. Every day, something different happens. I have a different meeting for a different project or some crazy chaotic story on the public transportation goes down. And it's it's impossible to to pinpoint what does an everyday life look like for a missionary. So for Lydia to come and visibly see that with me was was a really great experience for both of us, I think. And she came with a list of questions. She was ready to have conversation and talk about what it means to be a missionary and and the the philosophy behind it and why why are we here? Why is the LCMS sending missionaries? And so we got to have dinner every night together in my home or in someone else's home as we were going around and visiting different people in my community. And and we got to have those conversations and have deep theological conversations with some of our church partners even. And it was really awesome to see her get involved with that and and to see the the spark and the fire in her to to have an interest in serving internationally. That sounds like a really valuable experience for her. In your own experience, how how do you see this kind of opportunity valuable for others that that you'll come into contact with and also your own missionary service? How something like this would have been really beneficial for you as well? Yeah, I I definitely appreciate having been to this location before I served here long term. It really made a difference for me meeting some of the people that I was going to be working with and and having a relationship with them before I actually moved here. It it was life changing. And now I I can see the the benefit of the conversation and not just conversation on the phone or over zoom but actually being in a missionary's home and and having a meal with them and opening up your notebook and taking notes on on things that they've experienced in their life as a missionary it's it's a completely different experience than just going on a short term trip or or reading a missionary's newsletter even. It's it's really, really hands-on into what missionary life looks like, not just a segment, but the whole life and what that entails. Yeah, like Ariana, you said this is a, this is a lifestyle. So having an, this immersive experience of being able to really be, be in the thick of it for a little while, I, I imagine can be really, really helpful. But Mark, something like this, how, how would something like this have been helpful for you, this, this in-person immersive experience? Or did you have something like well, this? Well, I, I had led a couple of short-term trips with my, sure. my congregation. So I did kind of have an idea of what it was like. Mm-hmm. Um, it might have been helpful for my wife who ended up going <laughs> along with me and the kids. But I mean, it would have been helpful to see kind of what what does a missionary's lo- life look like. Mm-hmm. You know, we tend to have these expectations or mm-hmm. ideas, and and to be able to see what the downtime is like, or you know, what the day to day is like. And that, that I think would have been helpful to set kind of a a real realistic set of expectations going to the field. Yeah. Now, in your experience, what is an immersive experience like this? How is it beneficial for people who are who are considering being missionaries? Well, like Ariana was saying, it, it helps discern in in do I want to be a missionary? Is this something, you know, like uh, Chelsea, you know, the, the crazy stories on the subway, you know. I saw all of you, you know, guys laughing. It's, it's, we all have our stories and, you know, some of those experiences as a missionary, you know, even if you shadowed someone and you had one of those strange experiences or exciting experiences, it would be, a, you know, an opportunity to discern is, is this really what I'm, I'm up for or not? Or is this, you know, plus just the downtime. I mean, like I said, we tend to bring expectations and it, it helps to discern and and see, well, maybe this wouldn't be a region I'd want to serve. And, you know, mm-hmm. maybe this is not the kind of place or maybe, yeah, I want to I want to jump in. Yeah. 
So there's a lot of value to an experience like this, especially if if there's a discernment happening. Mm-hmm. If you're thinking about mission service, this, this sounds like such a, a wonderful opportunity for people to, to really experience that and and get kind of a step forward or, or saying, nah, maybe this isn't actually what I want to do. I want to serve the church in a different way. Yeah. So just a, a great, great thing. And Ariana, you, you already mentioned a little bit how this is going to work. Let's give people a, a, a bit of a overview of of where this service can happen throughout the, the world, what the regions are. There's not a straightforward <laughs> list of answers to that question. Mm-hmm. We really are going to try to tailor this experience to the individual. If they have a particular skill set, maybe they're skilled in music, we mm-hmm. would probably try to match them with a musical missionary or if they're an IT person, you know, and so on. It could be in any one of our four regions, which is Asia, Eurasia, Africa, and Latin America and the Caribbean. But yeah, we 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 don't just have a list of this is where you could go, but we really work with the individual where where they might be interested in going and specifically what work they would be interested in doing and how we can best match that to them. Yeah. Can, let's let's go back and, and review some of the, you mentioned missionary, musical missionary work. What are some of the other talents and, and those kinds of things that people might be able to shadow on the mission field? Well, you know, yes, music, like we do have IT people. There's also, you know, business managers, you know, someone with, you know, some skills in communication. You know, you think of a lot of the different degrees, finance even. I mm. mean, to to there's so many of those vocations that support the work of mission that it's not just your, you know, historically it, it, it almost seemed like, okay, pastor, you know, that that's the mm-hmm. one. Well, I mean, it, without all that other support staff, a business manager, you know, musicians, deaconesses, DCEs, and bringing their skills and capacities to and gifts with youth. So, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of those typical lay positions that are, I mean, vocations that we see that lay people do, you know, those help support. I mean, missionaries need their paycheck. Missionaries, mm-hmm. you know, need to have help with their visas and, mm-hmm. and so on. So those in the business realm, as well as, as as, as music. So, you know, like the, the one shadow we had recently, I mean, she's uh, getting close to being done with college. And so, you know, trying to discern is the vocation that I am looking forward to, will this fit into missionary work? Mm-hmm. I think it's wonderful to remember and recognize all of those people who do work in the jobs that you don't always mm-hmm. think of as mission work. But I know those business managers oh, yeah. and all the people mm-hmm. that, that work with the housing and the visas mm-hmm. and all of those things are so critical mm-hmm. to the work of, of everybody else who's stationed on the field. So shout out to those people. But also if that's a skill set to our listeners, if that's a skill set, there's absolutely a place for you to serve on the field. Absolutely. Who is eligible to do this shadowing work? I'm guessing there's a there's an age limit at, at least, but who what are the eligibility requirements for this program? Well, you have to be at least 18 mm-hmm. uh, to be able to serve and have a desire to want to discern whether or not God has called me to serve as a missionary. This would be a volunteer position. So, I mean, be a, under the volunteer, you know, wing. So it's mm-hmm. short term below, you know, it's only a couple weeks. So it's going to be a, through the short term teams and they can apply through the Serve Now website. But yeah, at least 18 and preferably, in, you know, as they are discerning in their college work, uh, mm-hmm. you know, is this where God is calling me to serve? And older people as well, well yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're uh, at least 18. At least 18. You can be 65. And if you Perfect. want to go and discern, great. You know, the Lord calls people, you know, you look at our field. Not everybody's, you know, in yeah. their 20s. That's, that is very true. Very true. Any any expectations or, or things that people should be prepared to do or to plan for as, as they would plan to apply for this program? I would say be flexible. Mm. I mean, if you want to be a missionary, that's the number one thing you got to be is flexible. You know, you're going to expect to have a little bit of pre-reading before you go. Mm. You're going to expect to have the opportunity to, we put, a, put together a journal so the so they can journal their experience throughout and reflect each day as they have different encounters, whether it be on the craziness on the subway or <laughs> the boredom of sitting down and, and not having anything to do for two hours, you know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we want to, we're crafting this so that it, it gives deliberate discernment points. Very good. And again, where can people go to apply for this? They can go to the servenow.lcms website, Shadow a Missionary. I don't know if you have that link somewhere, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll put that link in the show notes, servenow.lcms.org. This is a wonderful opportunity and I hope a lot of people will take advantage of it. The Reverend Mark Raby, Director of Missionary Recruitment with the LCMS Office of International Mission. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's a joy to be here. 
Ariana Gomez, Manager of Missionary Recruitment with the LCMS Office of International Mission. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much. And Chelsea Irwin, LCMS Missionary Serving in the Czech Republic. Thanks, Chelsea. Thank you. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.